Welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, uh, we were looking at um, the Son of God. We studied about the Son of God, the characteristics, the nature of the Son of God, what he accomplished, what he did. And uh, we uh, came to a conclusion where we said, you know what, how does this affect us? Uh, what does it imply to each one of us? And what should be our response? Okay, so our response, one of our response should also be to know that, you know, we are here with a plan and a purpose. We are saved, not just to keep saying hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, you know, and worship, but also to, uh, to go and to preach and teach the gospel, to make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which means to extend his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, So God is unfolding his plan, his eternal plan that he has in and through your life. Are you excited that, hey, you know, I'm not just doing some ordinary plan, but I'm doing an eternal plan that is everlasting, that stands for eternity, which means all the souls that you are bringing into his kingdom, you know, is your eternal reward, is something that is eternal, is going to stand. Uh, unlike, you know, working in, uh, in, in the, if you're just doing a, you know, job in the world, you're earning just riches, you're earning money, and we know that all of this corrupts and decays and will be left behind. But when you're, uh, you know, harvesting, souls for his kingdom they are going to go up with you to heaven they're going to come up with you to heaven if we are all going to be there at the same time or if they die and go ahead of us then we're going to see them in heaven and that is the eternal hope that we have eternal reward eternal joy just to see all of these uh, people we you know all our money our earthly possessions everything will be left behind here but the people, the lives that we invest will be there in, in eternity. And are you excited that, you know, this the, the plan that God has for you is something that he had even before the foundation of the world. Imagine he thought of each one of you. You know, he thought what would Rin do? What would Nina Santosh do? What would, you know, Arilla do? What would Anthony do? What would Shiv Kumar do? What would, you know, Nina John do? Just thinking about, you know, yeah, all of this, having his plan, writing it, I mean, not writing it down, <laughs> you know, you know, having his plan in his mind, all our days were ordained for him in his mind, even before they began. And it should just so excite us that, hey, you know, God actually knows I'll be sitting in the Bible college uh, or I'll be doing online studies in Bible college or I will be teaching in Bible college uh, in, in, in 2023. He already knows everything. See, and that should just so excite us. That should just cause us to, you know, uh, pursue God's plan and purpose for your life. And also to know that your life has so much greater significance and much purpose. Your life has much significance and much purpose, right? It You might not be heading, the, uh, being the pastor of a big church, or you might not be a very famous worship leader, writing worship songs. You might just be an ordinary worship leader, just a simple uh, youth pastor, a children's church pastor. But, you know, that is what God had in mind for you, you know. And what you are doing has eternal significance, eternal reward, and it is so much significant and so much more purposeful. So don't get into the rut or the the race for power and position and greatness and bigness. Just know that where you are, it's important to know whether, you know, that is where God has placed you, that is his, your will for your life, and just pursue that. You know, because Jesus was also tempted for, with greatness, right? To become the king, to become the Messiah. People were ready to make him the Messiah, to make him the king, but he knew that his God had called him, the Father God had called him not to be the king, but to be a servant. Okay? To be somebody who's hanging on a tree, who, who they considered, the humans considered, the Greeks and the Romans considered as cursed. Okay? That is where Jesus, God the Father wanted him to be. So he could have thought, hey, you know, as a human being, he could have thought, 
can't God the Father think of a better plan of salvation rather than me dying on that cross? Because curse is a man who dies on the on that tree. Why should I be cursed? You know, but he went there. There's no sign of greatness. There was no sign of for us in our human eyes, there was nothing great. It was just foolishness for those who see. It was just death. It was pain. It was suffering. They said, if you are uh, really the son of God, you know, you can get yourself out from that place. But then when he rose, you know, he conquered the grave. He conquered sin. And also he was enthroned back to his original position. So we see even in the life of the son of God, there was no greatness. There was suffering. There was pain. There was uh, um, he was uh, hungry. He was lonely. He was abandoned by his friends. Even on the cross, he cried out, "Father, Father, why you, why have you forsaken me?" Okay. Sometimes we can feel that, but Jesus was forsaken by the Father because he carried on the sins of the world. But God will never forsake us, even though we are sinful. See, because He loves us. But, you know, he went to that extent showing that, you know, building God's kingdom is not just for greatness. It's not grandeur. It's not uh, majestic. It is not pomp and show, but it is hard work. It is laboring. It is uh, painful. It is difficult. Okay. So that should be our mindset, even as we are building God's kingdom. And, uh, you know, God is unfolding his plan in history now through the church matthew chapter 16 verses 15 to 19 can one of you read that please matthew chapter 16 verses 15 to 19 he said to them but who do you say that i am and simon peter answered and said you are the christ the son of the living god Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon. What, Jonah? For flesh and blood has not revealed his, this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. And it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind in earth will be bind on heaven, and whatever you will you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Amen. So here we read that. On this rock, which means on this truth that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, you know, Jesus says, I will build my church. Okay, so on this rock, which means upon this truth that Jesus Christ is the living God, uh, he says, I will build my church. And the church uh, that is stands on the solid foundation is established on the truth that is Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He is God incarnate and the gates of hell will not prevail against him, which means the enemies of the church will fight against this truth that Jesus Christ is not the son of God. He is not God incarnate, but Jesus Christ will prevail. He will remain as the one who is the son of God, who is alive and um, Whatever he has done in the Bible, whatever he has said, he has not changed. He still remains the same. He will fulfill everything that he has said. He is going to bring about. He has planned even before the foundations of this world. So in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of God, even today people can be saved, can receive eternal life in his name. Even today, sickness and diseases can be healed even today you know in his name uh demons shudder and shiver and run and flee the works of satan can be destroyed and in his name you know people receive healing and wholeness so we as his church 
you know, we are built on this truth that Jesus is the Son of God, the Son of the living God, and the same Jesus you know, all that he did, even when he was on this earth, he's the same Jesus who continues to do his work in and through us because he has given us the keys of authority. He says, I will give you the keys of authority. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, which means I will give you the authority from heaven. Whatever is in heaven, you can bring it here and establish here on earth. Speak it here, decree it here. And whatever is here on earth, which is not in heaven, you can bind it and you can nullify. So we have that authority. We have the power because, you know, we are his church. Uh, we are the saints, believers, the sons and daughters of the living God. And we have been given this authority. And, you know, we are asked to continue the work that the Son of God came to do and began, began here on this earth. Okay, any questions? You have a question? Yeah, can you give her the mic, please? Uh, online students, you have any questions? Yes, I want you to explain that firstborn of all creation means what? Like He's the firstborn of all creation means that we talked about the first man and the last man, the first Adam and the last Adam. The first man, the first Adam brought sin, death, pain, suffering, everything. But the last Adam restored everything that God created. So he's the first born in, of creation means that those who are created in new, a new creation, new life in the spirit man. Okay, so when we had when we were dead, dead to sin, a spirit man died, right? But when we are born again, we are born again in our spirit. Yes. So Jesus died as a man, but he was born, he was resurrected in the spirit, and he was the first of his kind. Anyone has any other questions? Any questions from our online students? Okay, if there's no questions, so we finished this course. Uh, thank you all for uh, being part of this course. I hope you've learned quite a lot. I enjoyed uh, you know, studying everything again, uh, looking at everything just brings back such powerful reminders of the truth and living in the truth it just we all need reminders right so this is also when i teach it just powerfully reminds me as well it benefits me a great deal i enjoy teaching because it actually teaches me a whole lot i i learn a lot it reiterates a lot of things helps me to journey along with um, god as well so i enjoyed uh, studying this and uh, also teaching i hope you learn quite a lot uh, from this course uh, so online students uh, when can be the last assessment uh, for um, when do you want your last assessment can you just share a date and then the others can agree anyone can so the last second assessment we had chapters five six seven eight right now we'll have chapters 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. One minute. Um, so online students, uh, the last assessment will be chapters 9 to 13. Uh, can you suggest a date, please? Yes, uh, Nikhil. <laughs> One minute. I'll go ahead, son. 17th okay are all of you okay with 17th the rest of the students online students is 17th okay okay then we have two options here uh, one is 17th and one is 19th so the rest of the class we have four of you rest of them uh, there's only six students so the four the rest of the four can vote oh my gosh this is making things difficult one says 17th one says 19th one says 20th Okay, 
So we have three. We have the rest three to vote unless you have. Uh, there's only six students in the online class. I think I'm one of them as well. So the rest of you can vote whether you want 17th, 19th, or 20th. Anyone? Any suggestions? Okay, there's only five of them. Okay. What does Nina John say? Nina John, you want 17th, 19th, or 20th? Arilla, do you want 17th, 19th, or 20th? Seventeen. 20th? Okay. Shiv Kumar says 20th is also fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Arilla. What about Nina John? Hello, Nina. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. <laughs> uh, Whichever. I mean, since they are so, they have been specific about their date, so there, there must be some reason. Otherwise, I thought it would be better to finish earlier. Sorry, I can't. Uh, I can't hear you very clearly, guys. Can okay. you help me? I can't hear ni what Nina John is saying clearly. Okay, I, I'll text then. I'll text. No, no. One minute. We can hear you, uh, Nina. No problem. Yeah. Can you? Can yeah. You can, I, I said. Uh, I mean, since they have mentioned specific dates, there must be a reason behind it. But uh, I thought earlier would be better because we I think we'll be going to be having quite a lot of assignments one after the other. But uh, if 17th if is not OK with others, then OK, then fine. I mean, at least two people have said after 20th is OK. So then, yeah, that's also fine. OK, thank you. So I think we'll go with 20th. Uh, so 20th is. Um, 20th is a Thursday, so you can submit it on, um, so I'll, 20th evening I'll post it, and then you can submit it on Saturday, end of day. Is that okay? That is 23rd, end of day. Is that fine? Okay, Anthony says, 20th is Thursday? No, my thing shows 20th is Thursday. Thursday? Okay. So you can uh, post it on Thursday 20th. You all can return the assess assessment on 23rd, which is uh, Saturday. Okay. Thank you all for joining this course. I hope it was a good learning experience. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Unless anyone has any questions. Okay. No questions. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you all. Bye-bye.